a new vlog, but it's going to be a bit weird. So, my spiffball vlog will be going up on Monday, and it technically should be a weekly vlog, and it technically will, but because I want to document the other things that I read within that week, I'm going to tag on this to my normal weekly vlog, if that makes sense. So today is Thursday the 5th. And I will be reading Tethered Spirits, which is a spiffball book, and I will be reading that until the until until the end of the week. <laughs> until I finish it. But I picked up Wedding Crusher today, which is one of the books that I need to read for my TBR game. So I picked this one in order to get my kitty companion called Chloe I need to read this and I was initially going to do one of my um my self-destruct book or my pick of the month from Katie but I'm going to read those probably next week but I wanted to do some of the prompts and I was in the mood for contemporary because the last three books that I've been reading a fantasy for Spiffbo I have to say Mia Sosa, how very dare you. The absolute audacity for you to make me laugh out loud in the first couple of chapters. I don't know what to say about this book. So this follows Solange, 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 I can't say it, I'm common, um, who was helping out her cousin for a wedding and accidentally ended up crashing the wedding. The gr groom was the one the person that was supposed to be the groom ends up coming to her for help. <laughs> this is fake dating. Part of this is like I'm, you could call it false proximity. One bed trope situation. Yeah, I'd say false proximity is uh, like a side side trope. This is the kind of book that makes me laugh. And it's not trying to make you laugh. The 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 chemistry between the the two main characters is it feels genuine. It feels is is she's very light hearted. It's not a group of sunshine, but they are opposites. Like she is very she's still very intelligent, but she's kind of like not solidified in what she wants to do with her job. Like, she likes to travel around, she doesn't have a set plan, whereas Dean's very planned and needs to have a plan in order for things to work out. And again, he needs to see where things are going, otherwise, and otherwise he gets a bit stressed. And she's very much like, I want to find someone who is all in, like, when it comes to relationship, because I'm an all or nothing kind of person. She's very me. I'm an all or nothing kind of person. I mean, if you're going to be my friend and if you're going to be in a relationship with me, don't half ass it. Be all in because that is what I am with my friends and any kind of relationship I get into romantically as well. And if you're not going to be a friend that's all in or a partner that's all in, just don't bother. I've had enough of that bullshit in my life and I don't need any more of it. And then you've got Dean who is a lawyer but he still has a fun side he's still is although he dresses very proper and he he has a very serious job and he wants to make partner and he has a set plan for his life he can still have fun and he's the playful fun side of his personality and he's not a stuck up guy and he never came across as such which i like because a lot of the time when they start this kind of thing they um, that's why I can't call it a grumpy sunshine because he's never been the grumpy one. Whereas a lot of the time in these kind of books, you've got your person like Solange in there, but then you've got your Dean who starts off being quite grumpy and abrasive and stuff. But from the start, Dean and Solange have had this cool banter and I just think it's been really, really fun. I've passed the part now where Chloe messaged Becca and was like, oh my god, what what the hell was this? I did not expect this to happen and I, I am so happy 
I just can't. I can't. I, I, I can't deal. This is going to be five spice. Five aubergines. Five fucking dildos. Whatever you want to call it. This is feeling very much five stars. Vibes. The vibes. <laughs> um, Jem said this is the year of the vibe. And <laughs> very much is. <laughs> and I'm so happy that the lovely person at Yalk convinced well she didn't even need to convince me all that much she was just like here are some books that I would recommend and now I really can't wait to get to date Dr Dill because that was another recommendation so they were like oh you might like this or you might like this and then there's out of the blue um, that was a recommendation from that stall as well so I am very much interested in getting to those two books as well but this is if you like a little bit of smut a bit of flirty banter it's not a try hard book it's just very easy conversation between two characters lots of chemistry and just a fun time that will make you laugh out loud at parts as well and multiple times i've like chuckled at this then i highly recommend this i've not even finished it yet um, but I do have the audio, it is on script, so, yes. And this definitely will be one that I reread. Unless she really fucks it up at the end, which I seriously doubt, because Chloe and Becca both liked this. A lot of the tastes that we have in contemporary are quite similar, so. Yeah, I'm going to move on to Tethered Spirits. I'm going to put this down now. I don't want to, but I need to continue with Tethered Spirits and I need to edit my vlog for tomorrow so I'll be doing that tonight and I will go back to my Spiffball vlog and update everyone <laughs> update everyone on Tethered Spirits but yeah I um, just wanted to come in and say this might be a little bit longer than a week but you might not see me now until Sunday so it's not that much longer so yeah anyway welcome to another weekly vlog hi hi we are now on Monday. Are we on Monday? I don't know what day we're on. What day we're on? Um, I've not been well today, so I'm kind of out of it. I've been on one well all weekend, so I've really been out of it. <clears throat> I hopefully should have got my Tethered Spirit vlog. Tethered Spirit. I should have hopefully got my Spiffball vlog up last Wednesday. Well, technically, at the moment, it's like two days from now. Because I should be finishing Tethered Spirits this evening or tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Um, but I am going to quickly show you, before we go live for Shovel of a Ding Dong, um, what books I've read that I'm going to be reading for this week. Keep of the Lost Cities. I've read this over the weekend. Audio booked it. Um, yeah. I gave this four stars. It surprised me in the best way because like Jade and Gav didn't really like it and when it comes to middle grade, a lot of the middle grade they like I enjoy. I was kind of concerned about this one but it was it was really good and I'm looking forward to continuing. Um, read between the lines. It's got a, was it a 3 or a 4? 3.5 maybe. This one doesn't only take inspo from You've Got Mail, it kind of um, takes some scenes from You've Got Mail, so be careful about that. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I can't remember if I've updated this vlog at all or done anything with this vlog in any way, shape or form, but hi. Today's Tuesday, I think I started vlogging yesterday and then I was running late for the trouble of a ding dong live and the girls were chatting and you could hear it through the mic and I think I just stopped mid clip and then left and then come back. So we have books that I have read so far, Keeper of the Lost Cities, this was a four star, enjoyed it way more than I expected to enjoy it. Um, this one is Read Between the Lines. Now, I will be keeping this one. I'm still debating whether it's a three and a half or a three or a four. I don't, I don't know. So this was the one thing that let this down for me, which is just a massive bummer. And I'm going to put a spoiler alert up here because if you don't want to know what the issue is, then 
there's a thing, there's a, there's a thingy here. This is supposed to be influenced by You've Got Mail. Now, I would say it's more than influenced. There are scenes in this book that if you've watched You've Got Mail, you will immediately know that those scenes are from the film. Um, for instance, one scene where Tom Hanks, I keep forgetting his actual fox, fox, fox guy, um, he goes into the bookstore that he's basically ruining the livelihood of the owner of that bookstore with his nephew and they buy books and he doesn't tell the owner of the bookstore who he is and this happens in this. Jane, aka Brie, um, doesn't tell the owner of the bookstore that she is a woman that is evicting her or not renewing her lease. So basically Jane is the corporate Tom Hanks in this but she is a like part of a realtor company like a, um, a corporate business that's like taking over taking over buildings cut, um, knocking them down and renovating them into condos and stuff she's one of those people and then we've got Rosa who owns a small bookstore that was inherited from her mother when she died and she was in there as a kid and you see where this is going and obviously it's a contemporary romance, we know what happens. But it, it's sapphic and it's great in that respect. And But that scene's taken almost directly from the film. There's another scene where they agree to meet for the first time, which is taken directly from the film. More, there's a little, little bit of a difference, but even the way that the Meg Ryan character acted Tom Hanks, Rosie acts that way to Jane. It's that didn't sit right with me. There's all fine and fair enough taking inspiration from a from a film or a storyline, but taking direct scenes didn't sit right with me. And then also Brinkley is the name of her dog, of Rosie's dog. And we you know well, Brinkley is Tom Hanks' dog. Um so for that reason, that's knocked it down for me because it just doesn't sit right with me that that was happening and that whoever proofread and edited this is, hasn't sort of gone to the author and been like, girl, <laughs> you've taken direct scenes from a film. <laughs> I love the whole corporate small business thing. That could have just been the vibe and the premise and then gone with it. Like, and yes, some things would have rung a little bit similar to You've Got Mail, which is great, but I'm really not a fan of the direct scene taking situation. It, so I'm I'm thinking 3.5, because I am doing half star review. I am doing half star things this year. I've left it as a three on Goodreads. I am going to be changing one of my other ratings on Goodreads, because last week, I'm just going to give you an update on what I've been reading. I read A Touch of Light and Cruel Gods, I have done a vlog that should have gone up Wednesday. Oh, there should be on Wednesday. What else have I read? I'm trying to look at what I've read. I'm looking at my, my, my tracker sheet. I've also read not what I had in mind. Not exactly what I had in mind, should I say, um, by Kay Brooke. This is not exactly what I had in mind. Not exactly what I expected from this book. I should have known by the title that it wouldn't be a typical contemporary, but if you're looking for a contemporary that takes a little bit of a different turn, it isn't exactly what you would have in mind when you think of a contemporary romance type of book, then this is a book for you. So this follows Alfie and I forget her name. Why has it gone out of mind? Is it, what's her name? Hannah? No, it's not Hannah. Why is it, why is her name gone out of my head? Hazel. The colour of my eyes. So yes, Hazel and Alfie are roommates, and he's in the synopsis, so this isn't a spoiler, but they sleep together right at the beginning of the book. Hazel decides that that was fun, but they don't want to, they don't want to make waves. They just want to be friends, they just want to move on, and not make it awkward that they slept together, because she thinks Alfie's a foot, and they can't afford, they live in London, they can't afford to move out and live anywhere else, so... They've decided to just be like, it is what it is. That, that, you know, 
That's great. Then Hazel's sister Emily sweeps in with her wife Daria um, and they need help looking for a house. Yeah, things happen. And that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to spoil it for you. But I would 100% recommend this. This was a four star for me. So there was that that I've read. I have also started Nevernight. We started our buddy read this week. Oh, I'm loving being back with Mia and Trick and Mr. Kindly. I don't want to say much about this. But by J. Christoph, it's great. I know there are some people that don't like him. You do you. I get it. Um, I personally, the books I've read so far from him, there are only two books I've read from him so far, I've loved both of them. Um, hence the reason why me, Catherine and Chloe are doing Christoph along, because Chloe loves books. I've loved what I've read so far. Catherine's new to this, but she's been very excited to get involved. So I am hoping that she loves them as much as me and Chloe do, because... Yay. So I've started that this week. I read The Wedding Crusher last week. Five stars by Mia Sosa. Seriously, the banter, the chemistry between the characters that wasn't too try hard. It was just, uh, everything was just so easy. And yes, the plot might seem a little bit grandiose, not grandiose, Um, I don't know. Basically, why can I not remember characters' names? Why am I shit at my life? We've got the main character, Solange. That's not even a, it's not even a, a, a common name that I could forget. So Solange is a romantic, and she helps her cousin out. Is it a cousin? Cousin, yeah, a cousin who's a wedding planner. She's helping her out at a wedding. She ends up crashing said wedding and stopping, <laughs> stopping the wedding, so that the groom doesn't make one of the biggest mistakes of his life. Dean is that said groom and later needs help because he's trying to work his way up in a law firm and he needs to prove to them that he has a stable life and so they will take him seriously. In comes Solange because she says to him before she leaves, if there's anything I can do to help you, I will help you. Because she thinks she's ruined this man's wedding and, you know, he's lost the love of his life and yada yada yada. So... It's fake dating, and it was just so good. I know that some of the reviews say that the plot's just ridiculous, but I don't care. It's great. Five stars for me. And then, is that all I've read? That is all I've read. So this week, we are going to be focusing on Tethered Spirits. Now that you can read... Oh my god, I just nearly hit myself. Tethered Spirits, which is in here. The cover looks like this. Very shiny. Looks like this. Um, this is a spiff book, book. So what I've decided is that the first spiff book vlog is going to have the two books. The next two I'm going to have four books. I'm just going to spread them out rather than try to read them all in one week. And that's going to be that. Nevernight is a read for this week as well. And I've already read a little bit ahead of the buddy read. So I should that should give me a chance to spend more time with Tethered Spirits. And I think I'm going to try and start Lady Midnight or The Hollow Places. I'm not sure which one I want to start yet. The Hollow Places is the book pick from Katie. I'm sitting with Katie. Um, she picked that along with the prompt for... <laughs> the prompt she picked was read part of the book upside down. So it can be a page, it can be a line, it can be the whole goddamn book. It's whatever much I choose, but read some of the book at least upside down. I'm going to try and do that all in one thing so I can get it all done at once. I haven't picked an extra book to do this on. I'm going to do it on one of the books that I'm reading at some point. Which, although the prompt is something that is very different, it's not something that means I have to pick an extra book, which is great. Love that for me. So that, those are my plans for this week. And then, in the post, I got The, the Poison Garden. This was a book tour book that I was supposed to be doing for the second, next week I think this was supposed to go live for me, next Friday. But because Amazon were crap with um, putting, sending the books out to the people who par par participated in the vlog, in the, I can't speak. Because Amazon were crap in sending the books out, the author's had to send them out directly himself. So this will be a book that I read next month, but I've acquired this. And... 
I'm excited to get into it. And it's got a little note by the author in the front. Not that you can read that because it's all in white. But yeah. That's my update so far. My Tuesday verbal diarrhea on you right now. Oh, other mail that I got. I got um, another book best day at book sleeve. And this time I got it with a zip on for traveling. And it has a little Jack zipper. It's so cute. And then in the sale, I also gotta get them all. Got a switch cover, which is just adorable. Um, and I love all the Pokemons. The Pokemons. And Ash, ah, she's got to be there, aren't they? He wants to be the very best that no one ever was. Um, and I'm getting so many books these now, I don't know what to do with them. Can we just appreciate how big these are? And if you felt a book bestie book sleeve, you'll know they are padded. Yeah, there are quite a few more that I want to get. That was a bit of bookish slash non-bookish mail that I received. You are up to date on my reading thus far. And I'm going to go now. Bye. Hello. How are you all today? Um, I don't know what I've updated you on and what I've not updated you on. And I forgot also that there are maybe two clips prior to Tuesday where I was starting the vlog a little bit early to update you on my general reading. I already mentioned that I read The Wedding Crasher and whatnot, but if I repeat myself at all in this vloggerino, I apologise. Update of the reading kind. Today I will be. I don't know why I'm holding this up, but I feel like physical holding something up makes me feel better, okay? A squishy <laughs> book bestie book sleeve is covering Tethered Spirits which I still haven't properly started yet. I still haven't done my poll for what books I'm going to be choosing for the next Biff Bob Vlogarino but I digress. I am currently also on chapter... where am I? Where am I? I know not what I am talking about. More than chapter 16. I think I am on uh, chapter 20. I don't need to tell you what this is about, do I? Girl called Mia and she lives in a place it's very grim. It's very grim and she something happens when she is a child and she's out for revenge. So she decides to go to this assassin training school. Can I call it that? Let's just call it that, because that's kinda what it is. She has to go through these classes and she gets tested. The likelihood of you being unalived in said assassin school is very high. And not only at the hands of the students may you potentially be unalived or injured. It's really good. And um, I think I've mentioned this before. I am fully, I am well aware that people do not like this author. I apologise if that's one of you. However, I think I did mention this briefly before, I know people have an issue with this author because they know half a story. However, for one, if you only know half a story through people, I would recommend you look up the full story and then make your own decision. For two, there were names that were written in this, unintentionally offending people. The author corrected said names and republished the books. And I'm not the people affected by said issue but I feel like that's all an author can do is acknowledge and amend when they haven't realised that they've offended certain people you know unlike a certain author that doubles down and just is a twat we all know who that one is anyway let's move on <laughs> I'm loving this book still giving me very much five star vibes Mia trick Mr Kindly the whole sh blah it's really I've only read this book out of this series and every time I think about how this ended and I keep sliding the dust check up every time I think about how this ended I'm very much like 
I don't know what to do with myself. And also, I realised last night on sprints that I have five books in March that are going to potentially break me. We have Dark Dawn, which is book three in this series. I told Tori I was going to pick back, pick up the Hunger Games again in February. So Mockingjay, which is the third book in the Hunger Games, will be read in March. Monster of Verity also won the Shrubble of a Ding Dong poll, so that means Our Dark Duet will be read in March. Jade Legacy in March. And there is another book in there that I can't remember what it is. Um, oh, Queen of Air and Darkness. Which I'm worried about because, yeah, yeah. So, I'm also seeing Wicked in the month of March. So, if after March, for a small period of time, I am numb, that is why. Because I've been all cried out. Yes, that is a song. And I feel like that needs to be playing over my little B-rolls while I'm crying to all these books. Anyway, that's that's for March, Lisa. Two months away to be thinking about. But speaking of Cassie Clare, I've got an email today with the cover of Swordcatcher. And can we just say, so excited. Much wow. 3pm tomorrow, there will be a reveal of the cover on my Instagram and Twitter. And um, you'll have seen it by the time this goes out. But, P.S. de Resistance is all I can say, my friend. I've been reading this bad boy and we are already on chapter 10 and I have so many thoughts. And <laughs> Becca, <coughs> Becca got a stream of thoughts as I was reading this. And then I just, I know that Tori's also read this. And I just screenshot what I sent Becca and was like, sorry, these are my thoughts. <laughs> I d I'm only on chapter 10, guys. And I haven't cried. There's a lot. It, it doesn't it doesn't ease you in. I'm thinking maybe because we've touched base with these characters in previous books. We haven't gone into depth about their backstory, which obviously I'm guessing we're going to do in, in, in this series. We meet all these characters in this book that we've sort of like touched on during the end of the Mortal Instruments and it's just going more into their story and we start in like 2012 I think it is. No spoilers. Spoilers will be gone into on the live show but no spoilers right now. So far I'm really enjoying this. I did have to take a breather not because I'm not enjoying it but just because it was like my emotions were very heightened. <laughs> And I was just, it was just a lot in quick succession and I feel like I was just, it was a lot, especially after I just read some more of Nevernight as well, so, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to go to bed and read for an hour and read some Tethered Spirits and then do a spiff bob poll about what other books I'm going to be picking up and then we'll take it from there. Hello. It is, I don't know what's going on with my hair, it is early morning Saturday and I'm due to go to bed but I thought I would come in and give you an update on things that I've been reading. I haven't picked up Tether Spirits again but one thing I have done is skipped ahead of the buddy read and finished Never Night. So good. There was some little bits on reread that I forgot had happened and when things happened again and things were like ramping up and the action was ramping up I was messaging Chloe <laughs> intermittently, sporadically but I was and surprise surprise five stars I now cannot wait I'm even more excited to get on to book two because there was a little bit at the end of this I think it was actually in the epilogue that I forgot that this actually happened and I don't know if that links at all into book two 
but I'm excited. And then I've also been reading Lady Midnight and I'm nearly finished. This absolute chonker of a 600 page book. I have an hour and 20 minutes left on whatever speed I've got it on currently. I don't know what speed I've got it on currently. But I'm really, really enjoying this. Becca has been getting my verbal diarrhea thoughts. I've also been sharing some thoughts with Tori. But I've been messaging them separately and kind of like got a bit tired of repeating myself at one point. So I just screenshot everything I sent to Becca and then just sent it to Tori. I do need to update Tori. I've updated Becca, but I will update Tori on my full thoughts and feelings and ponderances. When I get up on the morrow, well, it's not really on the morrow. It's kind of today at this point, but later on today. I'm not going to my family's house because I feel like shite. Which is why I've not really been checking in as much, I don't think. Have I? I can't even remember the last time I checked in. I don't think I checked in on Thursday. I think the last time I checked in was Wednesday. Now we're on Saturday morning, I think. I don't know. It is what it is, but there we go. So I've almost finished... How many pages is this? 600. I think this is 400. I'll have read about 1100 pages this week. Which is not that bad, I don't think. And I can't think of anything else that I have read this week. I don't think I have read anything else this week. But what I do need to do is start reading some of my Indian Quad books. What I'm probably going to do this weekend is, um, first thing in the morning when I wake up, uh, whilst I'm getting my breakfast done, and I'm going to finish this. And then I'm going to probably move on to one of my books that is going to fill prompt for... Wow, my hair is an actual mess. Um, this fills a prompt for Key Mark Readathon, but also fills a prompt for Great Bookish DBR off, I think. This is Exile. Exile is only short. It's a couple of hundred pages. Is it a couple of hundred? It's only 126 pages long, but Of War and Ruin actually comes out on Thursday and I need that book ASAP Rocky, so I'm going to be purchasing that, so I need to read this first. I have got the arc of this, but the arc, not this, Of War and Ruin, I have got the arc of War and Ruin, but it only came out, like this week so i haven't had time with everything else i've got to read to i mean i've had to read it because i think it sits i think it was like 430 or 450,000 words which is rivaling brandon sanderson cosme a book i sure someone said about 1300 pages long that's a lot that's a lot of it on a tbr it's already 15 books long at this point I have already finished seven of those books now though and we are on the 14th so I'm on track to finish on time. I'm living, living, living life. If I can get Lady Midnight finished that'll be book number eight of the month and then I can get this finished book number nine of the month and then I think I'll be able to sit down and attempt one of the five books I need to read for the Indian Quads. Because I only have two more months to complete that. Those are my thoughts, feelings, feelings and ponderances, she says. I know I keep saying this and I'm going to keep saying this until I finish both books. I do still also have Just Like Magic and Illborn to finish. One of these I will attempt to finish this weekend as well. I have actually found, I say I found, I've spoken to both Tori and Jem, who have found some sort of nature sounding, I think it was like Midnight Forest or Enchanted Forest, something like that. Some of these ASMR nature sound type things that I think might actually work when I'm reading. I can't read in utter silence. I think I'm so used to audiobooks that I've got used to the listening to it as well as reading it and 
it, now that I try and read physically without anything in the background, it's too silent and my mind just wanders and I start picking up on things that are outside or I can't listen to anything with any kind of beat to it because my brain then picks up on the beat and then I get also get distracted that way. So we found some sounds on YouTube that I've saved that hopefully like they don't have music behind it, they don't have a beat. It's just like enchanted sounds and we're gonna try that is what we're gonna do. So fingers crossed I can get these physical reads that I need to get done completed and then there won't be any unfinished books. What I've also decided is the next fifth book books I'm I've got a wheel. I've got a wheel of time. No I've not. I've got a spin the wheel. And I'm gonna pick my four spiff bow books by using this. And I don't need to do my next spiff bow vlog until February, I think. So I can just read the four books over a few weeks rather than trying to cram them into one week. That is my update for tonight. I literally just sat and read. I also need to trim this fringe a little bit more than I have done. I think I've left it a little bit too long. But it is what it is. I just cut it off last night. Made some kind of fringe thing. I will sort out the levels shortly. But anyway, um, yeah, that's my weekend. That's me done. I'll speak to you at some point. Hello, friends. We are wrapping up on Sunday. So I've read a lot of books in this vlog. <laughs> But anyway, I did start like a previous Thursday, but I've finished, I started and finished a Wedding Crusher, not exactly what I had in mind. Um, Read Between the Lines, Never Night, Lady Midnight, and what else did I do? The Exile, I think. And then obviously the previous week I read the Tooth Biffball books, so... In this vlog, it looks like I've completed quite a lot of books, but it is over like a week and a week and three days. It's almost a week and a half. So total to date, I have finished nine books, and six of those I've given five stars to, and three of those I've given four stars to. I'm hoping that this means that I am getting to know my taste a little bit better, and I'm not being too generous with the five stars. But because I'm going on vibes, I think that that's just the best way forward for me. Um, I think I actually changed one of those 4s to a 3.5 actually. So there's two 4s, one 3.5 and the rest are 5s. So it's still good, it's still, it's still a good rating. I might do an, I might do more static things at the end of my wrap ups now and just give like what my average rating is and my average pages per day just so I can like see that as well maybe, I don't know. I've done a lot of filming today. Um, some of the girls kept me company. I've been having a bit of a shitty month, mental health wise in general, and both the girls were up in Edinburgh, so um, a few of the ones that weren't up in Edinburgh busy. <laughs> They've we've just had a bit of a chat. All done some productive stuff. But that's been fun and kept my mind off other stuff. I'm really excited for next week. So I'm going to start next week's vlog after this because I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to update you on my reading tomorrow. I will have a lot of reading to do when I get home to keep on track but also I will have a lot of editing to do. So breaking off to update on my reading on Monday on the start of the vlog might be a bit difficult. Thank you very much for joining as always. Anybody who watches and interacts with my content is very much appreciated. Um, if you do like me, like, comment, subscribe to all the good stuff. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of 2023. And I'm hoping with your help we can do this. If you don't have anything to say but you want to let me know that you're here, please leave a black heart. It is very much appreciated. And yeah, as always, Google form link down below with any recommendations you have for books that you think I would like to read. Enjoy Every time I fall in love, it seems to be at the wrong time